All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel at the Regal Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Harry in the chair. How are you, mate? Yeah, very well. You thank good? You. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, mate. So, what's the plan? What are we doing? Um, so, well, as you can tell, it's, it's got out of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been playing around with like putting my hair up um, okay. for a bit, but I, it's not quite there. The wings are still like, okay. ridiculous on the side. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm in between like keeping it long, play, like having it up, or go back to something like shorter and more manageable. Okay. Um, I've got really, well, quite thick hair, so yeah, it's yeah. quite difficult to like style it consistently. So at the minute you've got quite a severe, a severe undercut. Mm. Is that something you did at home or is that something from the previous haircut? Uh, so my flatmate's been cutting my hair. Yeah, I gathered that. Lockdown, but I thought so. Haven't done for like three months, I think. Right, so okie dokie. If there's any shorter, we'd struggle because there's such a heavy disconnection. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But like there is a really heavy disconnection but it, it is long enough there that we're fine with all right we've had a couple of guys come in where it's quite fresh and it's mm. it's just you, you kind of can't do much with it unfortunately when you're saying you want to you, you're in two minds mm. what is it about the longer hair that you're not liking what i like that having it like i've been playing literally like putting it up at the back right but then the way that it looks at the sides and it, yeah. it's like because there's quite a lot of volume of hair it yeah. like stays up and I just, yeah, I don't know, I, I like the idea of it, but I don't like the current look of it. Okay, so as in like, what, tying it into like a mambo, like a top knot? Yeah, for sure. Right, okay. Thing is, when you're doing a, if you're growing it into like, say, a top knot or, or, or a bun of any sort, you want to leave all the length because you can't have short of it because it won't hold, it'll stick out the, the, the bobble. So if that is the, if that is the plan, mm. you, you're in the phase now. I mean, I mean the, the, probably the best and the worst thing could have been your flatmate cutting your hair. Because it's worked out well because you can see what you're going with, yeah, for sure. but it's you're going to be consistently in this phase all yeah, the time until okay. you get there. And if it's not straight all the way around, mm. which I'm hoping it is, I'm hoping your your flatmate has got some good understanding of sections. Hopefully. Okay, okay, that's all right then. Um, but if it is even, then it's it's cool. But if it's not, it, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I can't make that decision for you. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think you, you know, are in that phase where. If you left it, you'd be happy, yeah. but it's getting through the phase of leaving yeah. it for now. I feel like I've been in the phase for quite a while. You are now. though, you will be. Yeah. You will be. You'll be in the phase for probably another six months, you know what I mean? So it's just getting your head around that. I think if you can accept that and deal with it, because the thing is, right, it isn't, you do need a lot more length. Like, you know, the front, the fringe has to get to the back, right, mm -hmm. all the way. And it's not far off, okay? Look, look at that sand from the front there. Yeah. It's coming almost to the back. The problem is your hair is just so thick. Mm. That is the issue, right? Which, that's not a bad thing. Because, I mean, I mean, mate, you could do so much with your hair. Like, well, this so thing, much. I want to know what you, you think. Like, what you think of my um, hair. I've always, I've always had, like, well, I started with skin fades and now I move more to, like, mid fades because I don't like the, the sh shortness at the bottom. Yeah. And then, but the whole time I've always just had, like, a bit of a quiff going on. Yeah, yeah. Like, a way shorter than this. Yeah. And, like, I come out the barbers, it's too short. Two weeks later, I'm happy. Yeah. Two weeks after that, I'm unhappy. And then I have a, a, a cut again, like a week okay. after that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for you, I would just go with your kind of the texture you've got going on now. I know, I know it's obviously just wild because it's so heavily undercut. Yeah. But I, I would play with the kill. I would have it just like just a, a generic length on top that you can do so many things with it. Um, I, I, I like. Let me see if I can find an image for you. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a guy who you'll know, but it's just because I want to show you. You've got a very similar hair texture to him because I've actually met him, and you've got a very similar hair texture to him. You've got very similar hair to Robert Pattinson. That kind of texture. Your hair's very similar to that, mate. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah, pretty similar. Maybe even probably a similar colour as well. So I, I, you know, that, that type of hair is just awesome to do so many things with. And I think sticking it up in a top knot, it's fun, but it's an absolute waste. I, I just think, yeah, I just think if you went with that kind of movement, I wouldn't cut it back, forward, I'd just cut it really kind of uniform in length and then just use the razor to really pick out bits and just let it yeah. fall. Um, but I'd connect in the sides a bit more though, okay, yeah, just sure. through here. But probably maintain the some length through here, but just connecting this underneath. So you see the difference when you take that in? Yeah. Even just leaving all that length on top by just taking the corners in mm -hmm. and I cover up the overhang. It, I mean, look at your face shape, it instantly changes your profile. Yeah. And then you let go of it and that's what changes it. Sure. But it's not my hair. It's just, I'm just here for the ideas. So, I mean, if you want to keep growing it, I don't want to be the person who takes you back, no, you know, sure. to the start. I think, like, I'd be very on the fence about it, but I think I am, like, I agree, I should get it uh, cut away. Um, yeah. And, yeah, the, the sides in. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. See, how short do you want to go on the sides? Because it's entirely up to you. It so, doesn't matter. I can make, 
It could go to skin, it could go to one, it could go to four, it's it up to you. It could go to one, um, so I got yeah. my sister's wedding at the end of the month, so I think my hair will be like... So great, yeah, so then. let it grow out till the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sam, well, are you, would you be happy to let me just kind of, I'll, I'll go with your number one on the back and sides, but yeah. would you be happy to let me just have a little play around with the top? I'll make it short, I'll make it manageable for you. Yeah. I'll take all that into account, but if you just let me kind of show you potential out your hair. Yeah, no, that's sweet. Yeah, Very all right, man, cool, all right. Well. I'll get you gowned up and we'll get started. All right? Thank you. Thanks, man. Right, guys, so we've just washed and conditioned uh, Harry's hair. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, probably going to start with cutting the top, okay? Because with the disconnection being so heavy, I want to try and connect that in before I start cutting the sides. But I think by cutting the top down and getting that length and starting to connect the sides in at this length now, I think that'll be a better option than starting with a horseshoe. All right? So... Just wetting that down a little bit because it's dried off a little touch. And I'm going to separate this at the crown. So if you look at Harry's crown, Harry's got a double crown, okay? You can see he's got... So a double crown tends to sort of... You have obviously two obvious crowns and then it almost joins in a line. Sometimes it meets into a point, but that's, that's basically Harry's uh, crown. Best thing is, though, it doesn't matter in this haircut, okay? Obviously, it would matter if we went too short, but we're not going to go too short because I want to still keep some length in there for Harry that we can alternate hairstyles, whether he leaves it to dry naturally, whether he blow dries it, whether he uses it as a diffuser. Harry's got that hair that you can curl, you can straighten, or you can just leave natural. It's kind of in between. That this is like the ultimate kind of hair you'd like if you, if you get bored very quickly of your hair, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a section from just before the crown. So when I say just before, what I mean is at the top, okay? If I say just under the crown, I'd be underneath, okay? Towards the back, towards the nape. So just before is towards the apex at the top of the head. I'm just gonna take that section. And I only do this because, again, we're starting at the top and this is just, it kind of stop. it's at the round of the head, at the round of the crown. So this is a bit more level when it comes to starting to cut, as you can see. So if it was a little bit, if it was on the crown, you'd be starting on that angle. So you end up either going too short or too long. So this is where it straightens up, but also it stops me from cutting the crown too short as well. So I'm gonna start at the back. And I'm gonna take a bit more length off towards the back than I am towards the front. Again, there's two reasons for that. I wanna leave more length at the front, just because that's the kind of style I'm trying to give them the options to play with. But also when you start the crown, as you lift the front up, because of the dip from the apex to the, where the fringe is, to where the hairline is, you need to leave a bit more length in there, you need to level up if it's standing up at the top as well. Right, so I'm gonna take off about that much. So it looks long, but to be honest, if you look at that, it's quite thinned out towards the ends there. So that isn't really got much structure in anyway. If you feel that, it's really thin. So it looks as though it's either been thinned out quite heavily, and it's just grown out from a thinned out sort of um, yeah, right. style. Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. So again, using, one of the reasons why I texturize the way I do, why I thin out the way I do, is because I can pick the areas that I want to thin out. And I know I'm, I'm very lucky I've got the luxury of time on my side when it comes to appointments. But at the same time, when you are using the thinnesses, there's ways to use them. Like more than going straight in and creating a straight, a straight line, point cut with thinnesses, it's perfect. It, it, it works great. I can even try one on it. If I get a gentleman who's got the straight hair, I'll show you that technique. It's a really, really nice way of thinning out the hair without leaving lines of shorter hair because essentially that's why the hair grows out wild because it's growing out from it, almost like, imagine the hair is cut that long or that to that length, and then you've got hair over the top of it. it. As we've seen in previous videos that we've done, when you cut hair shorter, it, oh, it stands up like that for a point, and then lies flat. So if you cut it too short, it's gonna stand up like this, which it's got hairline on top, which is gonna make it bigger. So that's occasionally why some haircuts grow out quicker, or grow out more wild, is because if you thin it out halfway through, it's just the short hair pushing the long hair out. So I reckon that's a good indication for where I need to cut it to today, all right? Now I'm gonna point cut into this, but I'm not gonna do it. It's almost just off being straight. You see the, the angle of my scissor, it's almost straight. That would be straight, it's just off. Now I'm just gonna start to graduate to more length at the front now. Starting from the apex, I'm just pulling the sections back to the previous section. And that will just allow more length to be left towards the front. As you can see, if you're picking it up now, you're starting to get on that angle now. See?
because we're not quite short, sure, so I'm not going to bring this up straight. I don't want to leave the corner in this because we're going to go so short we can create a corner with the clipper work. So I'm actually going to work just following the shape of the head just to this point, and as we get to the side, we'll miss this section here. That's what will create the squareness. We don't need to kind of create too much of a corner in there. We'll work on that with the clipper work in a second. I'm just following the guide from the left hand side to start with, and then the guide behind as well. There we go. So we'll level with the apex now. So we need to pull this up, pull it back now. This is where you start to add that over direction. There we go. Now this is where I'm going to connect in the top to this length on the sides now. So as you've got a, a good amount of length on the sides, you know, luckily enough Harry left it long enough for this haircut today, which is brilliant because as you can see I can get my fingers Right into that. And as I always say, if I can get my fingers in the section, we can always connect the top, okay? Now I'm cutting this straight because this is all about primary shape, okay? We will texturize this as we go along, but I'm just really connecting in the top, okay? This is not anything about uh, adding texture or anything. We don't need to point cut these parts here. It wouldn't do anything, any favors really. It'll just make waste a bit of time. So I'm just connecting in the sides. Right, that is all connected. That undercut is gone. But as you can see, so we've left. It does. Yeah, I know. You know, I, undercuts are fine, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I am not the biggest fan of them, only because I just most. I think the, a lot of undercuts came from DIY haircuts. I think you've got to, you've got to kind of work on the hair. Like yours will probably look okay, mm -hmm. but the problem is yours, yours is that heavy. It would flatten. Yeah. So it would just hang over it. It wouldn't stay kind of moving around unless you kind of blow dry it out and stuff. I feel, I feel it would after a couple of weeks it would just drop because there's no support underneath yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, undercut yeah. Does I, do that, yeah. I've had that undercut for yeah, yeah. like since I was 16 or so. so yeah, yeah. Like, and it, it does. You find it just drops. Like it, wings, when you yeah. came in, didn't you? The kind of big the big corners, yeah? yeah. Big wings, yeah. There we go. So I'm just working now from the centre over to the left hand side now. And again, just following the guideline. Don't worry if you see more hair coming off. I always have to stress this because this is the biggest thing that biggest was a fear and set and sort of thing that held me back so much when I started was I've got my guideline, but I'd see like see my guide and then I'd see loads of hair coming through the other side and I'd panic thinking, oh no, I'm taking way too much off. But if you're following your guideline, you're okay. Still an awful lot of hair coming through that bit there. I'm taking a section just before the fringe. Pull that back. There's my guide there. And lift this up, pull it straight up back to that last previous section, and there we go. And there is the guy we're working to, just the guy that is grown out. There we go. So while we're working on the top, I'm going to connect the fringe properly. I'm going to do this by working in sections down like a profile guide, and bringing it up and out. So that's the angle I want to take it at, okay? And as we drop it down, it just sits nice, you layer in that fringe in. So as he may mix it up, he's got support behind it. As he wears it down, it's kind of ruffled. Bring it over now. And there's a guide from before. Pull it up. There's a guide. As you can see the angle, I'm bringing this down a little bit as well. Just layering that fringe in. Now, we'll just trim the ends. Take off about that much. Right, so we're going to move on to the razor now. So I really want to start adding this texture. So I'm going to add some lift in to start with. So starting from a section we took first, that's just before the crown, and just work the razor from just under halfway all the way up. Because I really want to shatter this. I want to collapse, lift everything into this. I want to make this really, really textured. And as you see now, look how much thicker it is now. We've took them little dry ends off. That being thinned out the whole way through the hair. It's nice and thick. So I can get away with texturizing this a bit more now. If I'd left it any longer, I probably would have been quite limited to what I could do. Right, 
Now we've only got water in this now, but look what the razor's doing, I'll pull it up. Look how much the hair's standing up now. Like that. It's really standing up. Like that. You see the bit, we need to add more texture there, because that bit's standing up and that bit's falling down. If you work on, on that texture, just before it and just behind it. Watch this. See, that is just proof that that technique works because I've just showed you it falling down and I've just showed you it standing up. Now that is only water, nothing else. I'm just going to work horizontally now and just slide into it because I want to create different textures. I don't just want lift, I want movement. I want it to fall different ways. I want it to be sort of being able to look good lying flat, lying over to one side. Start again, standing up is always nice. Just work it into that front as well. I'm just doing this towards the ends because I don't want to compromise it standing up. So all that root lift we've done, I don't want to compromise that. So I'm just trying to break the ends up a little bit. Like that. I'm going to weight this down and just removing that undercut. So I'm not, you know, it's not getting like really caught up in the clippers or anything like that at all. I'm just removing a lot of that bulk. Come on, so there's the guide all the way around for your clipper wick. Right, I am going to dry a little bit of clay into this, okay? So I'm going to use your clay. So the Regal Gentleman Mac clay, just a tiny bit. I'm going to dry into the hair now. And I'm talking just a tiny bit. This product goes so far, like you do not need a lot. Literally a pea size, okay, not that much, you see. Make it into the hands, through your fingers. And I'm going to start scrunch into the hair. So kind of massage it into the hair more than not being too, too heavy with it. All right, I'm just scrunching it through. And what I'm doing now, I'm just seeing looks that I can create as I'm doing it. I'm not telling the client this, I'm gonna be probably chatting about footy or something like that, but the point is I'm doing this subconsciously and consciously as well. So I'm thinking about what looks are gonna do, it's gonna work for them, but I'm putting the clay in now so I can dry it in. And then the styles are almost there. So as I'm doing the clipper work, I can almost blend the clipper work in to suit the styles that we're doing as well. So first of all, I'm gonna dry the back and sides off and then I'm gonna use a diffuser on the top. So just a normal nozzle, back and sides from doing the clipper work on here. And then moving on to my diffuser. There we go. So high speed, sorry, high heat, uh, high, high heat, medium speed. I'm just working this through into the hair like that. I'm just scrunching the hair. Now by drying that clay in, when it's dried it will look like there's nothing in it but it'll have to hold. So it's a bit like using the styling powder at the end or something like that. Drying a product in just gives ultimate hold but like, it literally looks like there's nothing into them. The, probably the most matte effect you'll get out of using a product like that is when you dry it into the hair. So once we're going down to number one, I'm going to start higher up with my clippers. So I'm going to start on a number three. But as you can see, if you're looking in the mirror now, look at the top. It's looking wicked. Good, yeah. You know what I mean? And that is literally just minimal. Try a bit of clay with the diffuser. And obviously working with the, with the razor texture in there as well. So that is going to come into its own when this clipper works done now. Okay. Three and a half. Now close guard now to the number three. So we're keeping the number one quite low, just blending it right out some more like a taper fade will work well with this because we can maintain the shape. So think of something like this, finishing off with a really sharp edge, but having that real sort of lived in kind of loose texture through the top. I just think that it's a real good contrast of, uh, of sort of sharpness and texture. So moving on to my number two now. So 
lever down to create a two and a half. There we go, now down to the close guard, so number two. Just working up and off like that. You can hear the hair coming off, and then just pulling it off and away. And now on to our one guard. So one and a half up into our two. Just do a scoop of motion. And finally, down to our number one. Number one, up into our one and a half. So as you can see, just by working through the guards and using the right technique, you create a very nice blend. But just being, me being me and just to refine, I always like to just go over it. Bit of clipper over comb, bit of scissor over comb too. Working up into my one and a half. Just going to blend out into nothing on the bottom just very natural taper not going to be doing like anything too high it shows off kind of like a fade almost in a sense like a skim fade at the back i just want to do a nice taper i don't want to draw attention away from the top and i think the fading on anybody will draw the attention away most of the time from the top just a nice like there's a low graduation just to create a sort of clean finish more than a noticeable finish on the edges Right, I'm going to work on my clipper of a comb now to blend into the top at the back and start to blend this in. Now, we're going to start just by working down here, then the one and a half into the three. Start with for now. So clean that up a little bit. Elevate and cut. And just start gradually getting closer and closer with the spanny comb to the client's head. Elevation, down from the right hand side there. Turn that off. And again, you see you comb it out. And then just cross check. And the elevation is key. We're not trying to remove too much length at the very top. Because that's already been cut in to the shape. We're just trying to blend in. So elevate it up just to kind of clean up the section. And then just get closer and closer to the scalp as you work down. And you see, I'm lifting that up. I'm not actually taking much off. I'm just starting to get the blending process and getting lower down. Get the shape of the comb as well. The teeth are almost facing towards me. So they get lower down and it becomes quite flat. The thing is I want everything to match, I want everything to blend in and not, not have like a really standout sort of feature on this haircut. I just want it to look like a really, a really sort of, a haircut that kind of works for, for every single thing that we've done within the haircut I want to work. Okay, so I don't want it to be like the old, a really sharp kind of fade out neckline or really sharp temples or something. Because I don't want to draw just one thing. I want this haircut to be perfectly balanced all over. So every single thing in this haircut works for this look. Again, I'm just going to sharpen that off. I'm just going to pull this over. And from the section before the crown, 
pulling it horizontally right out. And there is a point. Open just a little point off. It's still going to sit nice. So it's not too heavy or sits in nicely. It's not standing up anywhere. Now what I'll do is I'll just finish off with some scissor of a comb around the back and sides and just texture that blend a little bit more now as well. Just feed the hair through the comb and just cut into this blend. Like so, just to scatter it. And we can just lift it up and cut it into it like that as well. I love it. <laughs> it looks awesome, doesn't it, man? Yeah. It looks really good. So That's the vision I had as well. I'm so glad it's come out as how I wanted it to. But as you can see, it's all connected. You've got length in there now. It falls around. It's got a little bit of movement, bit of curl. It's got a nice square finish to it as well. Uh, and we've gone right down to a one on the back and sides as well. But it's got a really nice shape sitting in. How's that look for you? Yeah, sweet, mate. Love you, yeah? Yeah, completely. Sweet, man. Looks awesome. So, I mean, the texture of your hair is just, is just so good for something like this. It really is. And it'll actually stay like that as well. All right, man. Thank Thanks, bud. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Do you want to get to the home? I'll get there. I'll have a diffuser. Yeah. Like, just like, dry. It's, it's just like dry naturally. It's dry naturally. Yeah, yeah. Put some clay in and scrunch it and leave it to dry. Yeah. It's all a diffuser does. It just dries it off. It doesn't add any... Um, a diffuser isn't something that's going to create... It can obviously help with curl and things, but... Yeah. Because oh, mainly because you're kind of drying it in the in the shape you've let it set in. So when you scrunch your fingers to it and you hold the heat on it, it just oscillates the hair, so it just dries the hair. Right. When you use a nozzle, that's the one that forces it up and to move around. But that mainly just is drying. So if you could just put some clay into it, yeah. and then just scrunch it and just leave it to dry naturally, and then just run your fingers through it, it'll look the same. That's all. All the fuse does is speeds the time up really.